So this is my first attempt at doing a fancy style video blog. I've been doing video blogs for about four years, but they've been pretty terrible, I have to say. It's just been me, usually my mobile phone, and just talking nonsense for four or five minutes without any kind of editing work or anything really in the uh, sphere of quality control. But I do see the value in video blogging and I really like doing it. I enjoy the editing process, so why not give it a go? However, that said, I am a complete beginner, so I do apologise in advance if I accidentally cut myself off towards the end of a sentence. And I also apologise if for some reason I end up just staring at the screen for three or four seconds after I've already finished what it is I was planning to say. What I want to talk about is depressing books. I'm not sure there is such a thing as a depressing book, but Someone told me that I'd written a depressing book recently and although I would never, ever, ever respond to a review because that would be a very silly thing to do and completely unnecessary, the idea of a depressing book came up in one way or another as I will later go on to explain and I thought I'd talk about it. Thankfully I've had very positive reviews of the book so far and I'm very grateful to all of those people who said very nice things. But this review in particular was one star, just one star, and it said this is officially so this is an official, an official opinion. This is officially the most depressing book ever. I got no enjoyment from this book. I would not recommend it to anyone. Now fine, that is a pretty bad review and that's fine. I can handle that, I can take a bad review. As I say, lots of people have said nice things, so if some people say bad things, that's okay. But to complain about a book because it's depressing is a slightly interesting thing. And we do it with films as well. We do it with perhaps maybe even art or music. We say that we don't like it because it's too depressing. I don't think for one second that my book brought on some kind of actual medical condition and a very serious one of that because of reading it. I think what she really meant to say was that it was quite sad. Um, and it wasn't exactly a barrel of laughs. And I understand that. And that's perfectly good reason for not enjoying a book but it's not a criticism of the book itself. When we say books are depressing, I think what we're usually trying to say is that they were in some way tough to read, hard going, maybe the subject matter was quite difficult, maybe it was quite an emotional kind of book that touched a nerve in some kind of way. But none of those things are actually bad things. They're not reasons to complain about a book or a film or a piece of art or a piece of music or anything like that. Because as an author, you don't set out to write a depressing book. You set out to move people in some way or create characters that are interesting and in some way keep people engaged. And more than anything else, you set out to tell a story. And sometimes that story may be a sad story. And it seems strange that no one says that a book is too happy. Oh, I didn't enjoy that book because it was just, oh, it was just too happy. Or it was too st stupid, or it was too funny, or it was too anything, but too depressing, hmm, that happens all the time. So all you're really trying to do as a writer is to have an impact on people, is to make them feel something and to make them get in touch with a character in a way that makes them think about it for days on end. And if that happens to be a sad story, then it's a sad story. That's all there is to it. It's a book that happens to be sad. It may be as a reader that you prefer less sad books, or if we're gonna use the word, less depressing books. That's fine, absolutely no problem. But that's not a fault of the book itself. Instead, it may be that you just need to look for a slightly happier book, or maybe you get a third in the thing. I'm not sure how this is going to end. I don't think it's going to end well. Maybe I should stop reading now. As a literary author, I sometimes feel like I get a bit too hoity-toity, like I only read literary books. And one of the things that I've been trying to do over the last two or three years is read books that aren't literary. Things that are a bit more to do with things that I wouldn't normally kind of read, like adventure fiction, or non-fiction even, or crime, or something like that. And although literary novels aren't necessarily depressing novels, I do think that they inevitably, for some reason, have that kind of association. And it's wrong, because there are lots of fantastically uplifting literary novels. But as long as we accept that what we are reading is a book about whatever it's about, and if it happens to be sad, if it happens to kind of make you laugh, if it happens to do various other things, that's what that book does. And that isn't necessarily a reason to get upset with the book. Reasons to get upset with the book are things like, well, that was badly written, or that was very cliché, or, oh, well, that's disgusting. But being sad, that's just the book. Being happy, that's just the book. It's the one you chose to read. So I think that's all I'm trying to say, more or less. It's fairly incoherent. It is Easter, and I do have two children now that look like this. <coughs> and that have made my eyes look like this. But I do plan to do more of these videos, all being well, when I have the time. Don't panic if they don't come one a day or anything like that. That isn't going to happen, unfortunately. I'll refer you back to the children.
But as well as doing these kinds of videos, I will be doing writing advice style videos and I'm also reading a chapter of my novel A's for Angelica um, uh, every now and again and publishing it on YouTube to my channel, which you should definitely subscribe to.